Um, I can safely say, compared to the other speakers in the room today, uh, my knowledge of the beef industry probably goes as far as the delicious steak I had last night. But I do have eight years' experience working in the digital industry with Google, so I hope over the next 30 minutes or so you'll take away some insights that may help you take back to your day-to-day -day lives. So we love a good goal in Google. Uh, my goal for today is of two goals. One is for each of you to think about a challenge that you have and potentially how technology might be able to help you overcome that challenge. And the second, for anyone in the room who owns a business, which I believe are many of you, to think about your online presence and how you could potentially grow your online presence. So I'm going to speak about three areas. Firstly, innovation in Google what it means, how we approach innovation at Google, some of the areas that we're currently working on. I'm going to speak about some day-to-day -day challenges. I've made some assumptions with James on what some of those challenges are for um, some of the people in the room today. And then thirdly, around some of the tools that Google has available for small businesses to help you, uh, so to all businesses, to help you grow your online presence. So one of the other Th big things in Google is we're very big on culture. Um, I'm, as you can hear, I'm a proud Irishman. It was St. Patrick's Day last week, and we had um, uh, the day before St. Patrick's Day, we had a, an Irish celebration in the office. We had a bunch of Irish food, a traditional Irish band, and even some uh, Irish dancers. And I woke up the next morning, and I went down to Bondi Beach, where I'm living, and I saw a bunch of cattle and um, a bunch of horses. And I can safely say it's the closest I've felt to Ireland since, uh, since I moved over here three years ago. And I, I walked around, obviously, with this, this presentation today. I walked around um, for 30, 45 minutes just to get a, a sense um, of what this was about. And I came away with two things. Um, the first thing I heard when I walked past a little girl and her, her mother was the girl said, this is the best day of my life. And the second, when I dug a, a little bit deeper um, into the herd of hope and what it's about in terms of bringing you know, the challenges around organ, organ donation in rural areas in Australia it really made me think about how technology can change lives in an area like this. So it really kind of hammered home the innovation theme today um, and some of the opportunities when you can bring technology um, to the world. So I couldn't help myself but have a, a look back in Ireland at some of the um, technology um, initiatives and innovation going on in the, in the tech space. Um, I see Sean, who spoke before me, actually had MooCall on his slide. We didn't compare notes before. But basically, this is a way to predict if cows can give birth. Um, I was speaking with um, Gary Fisher from, from um, Hitachi and, and the folks from MLA and the amazing work that they're doing in the data innovation space um, in Australia here. And it's really exciting to see the di different initiatives that are going on to try to shape the future um, of the agriculture industry. Uh, Gary mentioned the point that in the next 50 years, we're going to consume more food in the world than we have in the last 10,000. And when you think of an area like the Northern Territory that has access to growing markets like Southeast Asia, if you compare, if you, if you bring that together with technology, the opportunities are endless. So this is my day-to-day -day role. Um, as was mentioned, I lead our small to medium business team in Sydney. Um, and really what we do day-to-day -day is we work with hundreds of companies, helping them with their digital strategy. Um, helping them get their website to a place where it's, it's optimal for users, helping them get their tracking, understanding what's working, what isn't. And there's nothing more exciting and energizing for me than seeing a company go through a digital transformation from having no website to having a fully functional website and having um, really telling their story and their brand online and seeing their business results really change from it. So what is innovation at Google? Um, as was mentioned, Google is, um, is 20 years old. Um, and it's, it's gone from you know, a small number of employees to 80,000 now within 20 years. I really liked the, the quote on the video, um, which was, it's around finding challenges in the world and solving them with technology. And I think that's really what Google is about when it comes to innovation. Google Maps 
was actually born in Sydney in Australia. Um, it's a product that has one billion users every month. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how I would get around Sydney without it. Um, and it's, again, it's, it's, I think, a very good example of a product that Google created that has had a, an, an impact on the world. As you see here, Google is split into two uh, kind of streams, really. We have our Alphabet, which is the umbrella company. And on the left-hand side, we have our what we call our moonshot big bets, which are basically companies that really focus on what we call 10x thinking, moonshot projects. Um, I'm really innovating to try and focus efforts on the biggest problems in the world to help, help and, and try and solve them. Um, so you may have heard of the Project Loon, which is essentially Google's way of putting balloons up into the stratosphere in areas that don't have access to internet to try to create access for everyone in the world. So these are the types of projects um, that Google is working on. And innovation is really has been part of, I suppose, the Google DNA from the beginning. Uh, we try ambitious, audacious projects. Sometimes they completely fail, but when they do work, it, it, it feels really good because you've had a, a, an impact on the world. Believe it or not, this slide is about machine learning. It's probably the, it's probably the best explanation I, I, I've seen on machine learning. I know it's a buzzword, AI, machine learning, and, and it's, it's been spoke, spoken a lot about recently, but really it's about differentiating between a, a chihuahua and a muffin, right? The, the, the idea behind machine learning is not only that it learns from the past, but it also gets more, um, it becomes more intelligent over time, and it really can become predictive in terms of the data that it's consuming and, and, and um, building over time. So the idea is to build systems to improve intelligence over time. And Google has gone, in my time at Google, we've gone from being a desktop first company 10 years ago, where we focus our products and everything we do around desktop, to moving to a mobile first company, to now being an AI and machine learning first company. Um, so everything you've seen from when it comes to kind of machine learning and AI is super important to, in terms of the future of the world. I'm just going to share with you now a couple of the different projects that Google is working on. Um, Here's one called Project Jacquard, which is essentially a way to bring the internet, bring connectivity to clothing. Uh, Google has been working um, over the past couple of years, actually, in, with companies in Australia to help bring technology to the shoe. So think about it for a, for a farmer, for someone who is remote in, in a remote area. Uh, how could technology actually tell the specific location of someone or what if someone you know, was in, in trouble or, or um, that technology can actually tell if someone is, is actually walking or if they're not? And the implications of something like that is pretty fascinating. fascinating. Uh, so the technology is, is actually there, but Google is working with some partners to see how we can bring this technology to life for the agriculture sector in Australia. And what about Google Street View? Um, Google has spent many, many, many hours sending a Google Street View car across the world to map out all of the streets in the world. You'll have seen it on Google Earth and Google Street View. We've now just launched uh, the Great Barrier Reef, where you can see the, and experience the Great Barrier Reef from underwater on Google, which I highly encourage you to take a look at. And also, perhaps more importantly, or as importantly, we've started mapping out vineyards and other areas of, of note to, to kind of really experience some of these um, some of these places before you go, go to try them out. We're also working with a company in the US called Aklima um, who do a lot of work around pollution mapping. Um, so these, these Google cars who are um, going from street to street now have the capacity to pick up on carbon dioxide, for example, or other factors that may point to a polluted city or the, level, the different levels of pollution within a city. The idea is that what we'd like to do is to really encourage the conversation and inform people um, around pollution. And I'm going to show a quick video here um, on TensorFlow, um, which is basically an open source 
machine learning framework. Um, to, and this is a project that was done in, in Europe uh, to understand cow behavior. Gmail Blue was part of the initial conception for Gmail when it was launched. At the time, the technology was simply not there. The culture of Google really is to incorporate moonshot thinking to every project. It's taken us six years to develop the technology to achieve Gmail Blue. Our major challenge was, how do we make this intimate, intuitive, realistic, and organic? In trying to bring email into the 21st century, uh, we are faced with a challenge. How do we completely redesign and recreate something while keeping it exactly the same? The answer is Gmail Blue. You click on Compose, the button Compose, blue. The word Compose itself, blue. Bold face is blue, underline is blue. Italics is blue as well. You write in the body of the email, the font comes up blue. You don't have to make it blue, it is blue. It just is blue. The little lines, they're in blue. When you go into help, it's blue. It's Gmail, only bluer. We experimented with a lot of different colors. We tried orange, brown. Brown was a disaster. We tried uh, yellow. The inspiration of blue came from nature. Ocean, sky, uh, blue whales. A blue that was reminiscent of nature, but better than what nature created. Sorry, folks, this is Gmail blue slightly is, uh, wrong video, as you probably noticed. It just a lot of doors. One moment. So we'll just try one more time, and if, um, if we can pull up the video, I'll just explain the project, and we can move on. IKEA's products have always been inspired by how people live in the real world. No. There's a variety of everyday dilemmas that can be solved or improved by our products. How could we... Okay. Not to worry. Um, essentially, what um, TensorFlow is an, an open source machine learning software that a company in Europe, in the Netherlands, is using to essentially build a Fitbit for cows. And what this allows them to do is understand when cows are moving, when they're sitting, when they're lying, when they're, the, the different actions that they're taking to really inform farmers of the cow's productivity and when they're likely to be less, less productive or change behaviors. And what this has done, it's they've started them um, um, sharing the, this product and from consumers, it's already had an increase in 30% in productivity. What I'll do is I'll share around the, the video afterwards to take a look. It's pretty inspiring stuff. Uh, Google is also working on what we call Project Wing, um, which is a way to, using drones, um, to allow you to get work done in an effective way. There's a, a lot of this space, which I believe was spoken about earlier, it's and even if we think back to, to Bondi Beach and, and the, the challenge that we have with kind of um, with medical equipment, et cetera, in rural areas, think about how this drones could potentially really um, change the way in which delivery is done in the future. I'd like to speak about now about some of the day-to-day -day challenges um, that may be experienced and some simple, more simple ways in which technology may help us overcome them. So staffing, can maybe put your hands up if finding and retaining staff is on your mind? Okay, so a pretty, pretty big chunk of the audience. So just thinking about how maybe Google, thinking about it from a Google point of view, how could we tackle a challenge like that? Uh, there's over two trillion searches every year on Google. Believe it or not, 50% of them plus now and growing are on mobile and 20% are now on, on voice. So the, the up to 10 to 15% of searches on Google every day are actually searches we've never seen before. So the pace of change of consumers' behavior online is faster than it ever has been before. So what I would challenge you here is to understand and challenge how are we telling the Northern Territory story when it comes to finding talent, when it comes to attracting people for the farm. You'll see here a search on, on Google um, for farming jobs in Northern Territory. What are we saying? How are we finding people? There's also 20 million users on YouTube every single month in Australia. 
And on average, on average, they spend 20 hours um, every month on YouTube, which is staggering. Our, one of our highest categories on YouTube is actually how-to categories. So as an example, I joined the gym um, about six weeks ago, and I came with a free personal training session. I had my session. One week later, I forgot half of the technique that, that they had uh, shown me. I turned to YouTube for how-to videos to try and get the technique right. What about if someone is starting a role, a new job in, in a farm? Could we create a series of how-to videos to actually help them understand what it's like in the role? What about using something like YouTube Red, where you can downlo download YouTube material and view it offline, which actually helps even in areas that don't have connection to the internet? Or what about an area like note-taking? If we look at the Google products in our Google Cloud business, You've got everything, uh, products that help to collaborate, that help to create, that helps to access to, to files on the, on, the, on the cloud. And many of these can be used both offline and online. If I take, I won't go through all of these now, but I would heavily encourage you to take a look at Google Cloud or the G Suite online afterwards, which goes through each of these products, and think about how can you use it in a day-to-day -day in, your, in your job. Uh, if we take Google Keep there, which is uh, one of these tools. This is something that I use, have pr used pretty much every day um, for the last two years. Um, I spoke with um, Emma, I was, I was chatting with um, Emma last night, who was, uh, we were discussing, we were discussing um, trips to Western Australia, and she gave me a couple of tips on where I should go, what time of year I should go. The first thing I did was take my notes down on Google Keep so it will, so it will um, I'll be able to save it and use it for later. I use this for business meetings, I use this for um, dinner recommendations, restaurant recommendations. Think about how this could be used in the context of the, of the farmland in terms of um, capturing information and data. Google Photos is another area that Google has put a lot of attention into developing the product through machine learning. If you have any, you'll see an example here. If you search for dogs, and if you have a bunch of, if you're a dog lover, lover, and you have a bunch of pictures of your dog, and if you search for dogs, you'll get this answer on the left-hand side. But if you search for dogs on the beach, it's not going to show you the left-hand side. It will show you the right-hand side, because the tool is now so intelligent that it will pick up, pick up the context at which you're saying something. So, for example, if you have a, you know, if you've got 50 photos of a, of a herd of a cattle, 50 photos of horses, how can we use this to actually help us? collect and use information on the land. So I'd like to discuss through some tools and tips for your business name. Can anyone guess, on average, how many times we look at our phone every day? Anyone like to take a guess? How many? 50. 50? Any higher? A little bit lower. <laughs> 150 times a day, on average, we use our, our phone. A uh, bit of a tip just to see how bad you are. I use a, a, I've downloaded a tool called Checky. It tells you how many times you, you check your phone every day. 215 times yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm very embarrassed at myself. Um, but it's really true that these days, we don't just go online. We actually live online. Nine out of 10 people when they're looking for information, go to their phone. So I would challenge you, any, anyone who's a business owner involved in a business here today, how can you take that consumer behavior and kind of basically maximize um, your awareness online when it comes to that? Just going to show a quick video here, um, which is a, a term that Google has coined, micro moments, to help kind of capture um, what this online activity looks like for a business. Okay, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, so essentially what, essentially what this is, what micro moments is, is a way to understand what are the moments that consumers need, are, are in time of need, so this is an example of someone who's just broken down his car and he's on Google search and he's looking for a mechanic. There's another example of you know, someone who's just had a baby boy uh, for the first time and he's like, what the hell do I do? 
right? This is a, it's a way for to capture those moments. And as a business owner, I would challenge you to ask yourself, how are you capturing those moments with your brand for your potential customers? So I'd like you to take three areas away from this section. One is, as a business owner, be found, be as relevant as possible, and be seamless. So what do I mean by be found? On the left-hand side here, you have what's called AdWords. So this is paid advertising on Google Search. On the right-hand side, you've got Google My Business, which is a free listing of your account, uh, sorry, of your business online. For Google My Business, you basically have your phone number, your location, your opening hours, and it's a way for you to verify your presence as a business and for potential customers to actually find you, to call you, uh, to, to, to get in touch with you through Google, through Maps, for example. So I'd encourage anyone to, who doesn't have a Google My Business listing and who does have a, a business to check this resource out. In terms of being relevant, um, here is, what, what I would say here is, who is your customer? Challenge yourself as to who your customer is. What are they like? Are they male? Are they female? Are they both? What's their online behavior? What kind of information do you have about potential customers? And how are you engaging with them online? Um, an example is I flew up yesterday on Qantas. Um, a very good example is Qantas would know that I'm, that I'm flying with them. And I get a, a video message saying, would you like to sign up to Qantas Lounge? Yes, please, right? That's relevant because I, I, it improves my experience. I'm an interested customer. I would highly advise you to look at Think with Google as well. Think with Google is our research piece where we publish insights about different industries, about the consumer journey, consumer behavior when it comes to online. And it really um, has a bunch of insights around the Australian consumer. Um, there's also uh, resources on here where you can actually survey customers, for example, within the Northern Territory or within New South Wales for new um, areas for your, and markets for your business. And the final and probably most important thing that I would suggest is being seamless. So companies like Uber, for example, completely change, and Amazon completely change consumers' ex expectations of what they expect from a business. Data is now saying that 53% of all users will leave a site that takes longer than three seconds to load, right? In the US, traditional retailers, as retailers as an example, their average site speed is six seconds. In Australia, that's still 12. And as, we, as I look to the next five years or so, that number is gonna come down and down and down. And if, if we had this conversation a few years back, Consumers will give you a, will, will come back, come back, keep coming back to your website if they have bad experiences, but not anymore. And we're finding that companies who really invest in a good, strong, fast website, their consumers are happy about it and they keep coming back. And the second point I would, I would say is to challenge, to think about the flow of the website. When someone comes to your website, why are they here? What are they doing? Do we, are we, um, giving consumers the type of experience that they want to see when they come to their website. For some people, it might be just a call straight away. For some people, it might, they want, might want to understand more information about the business. But I think using analytics and using data to understand that, um, consumers will, will, will share that with you if they're bouncing straight off your website. So I would highly encourage you to think about and ask your customers what is it that they want from your website. I'd also like to take a couple of moments just to share some of the resources that are available um, for your business. We have, um, we'll send these on afterwards, but I'd highly advise you to go to test your mobile readiness and go test my site. Put your, put your website in there and actually just see how fast is my website? How does it look? And there's a lot of tools and resources online um, to help you with that. We also have a program called the Digital Garage, which is Google's way of supporting businesses. Um, I'll send this material around afterwards to James, but please feel free to go to that website. 
I hope will come to Northern Territory at some point to actually um, showcase an event with Google specialists to actually help when it comes to um, improving the mobile experience. But there's a lot of resources uh, available online also. So I'd like to thank you for your, your time. And, and again, to revisit the two things that I, I said at the start, I hope you're thinking about some of the challenges that you have and potentially how technology may be able to help solve them. Secondly, that if you do have a business, thinking about the importance of having an online presence. And if you have any questions on either of them, um, I'd love to chat with you later. Thank you.